Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to complete out the header or nav bar of our full stack blog application. Let's start out by importing a few things that we're going to need. Let's go ahead and bring in our icons that's going to help us control the opening and closing of our nav menu. Next, let's go ahead and bring in use state that's going to help us manage the state of our menu. And finally, let's import sign in, sign out, and use session from next off. We're gonna use these functions within our nav bar to help sign in, sign out, and control the overall authentication of our user. Now inside of our nav bar function, let's create a key value pair of data session, and we're gonna assign it use session. We're gonna use session as part of our dynamic nav bar to help us manage the state. This is what's gonna tell us if there's a user signed in, display these nav links. If there isn't, display these nav links. So now that we have our initial setup, let's build out our action buttons that will be dynamic and will display conditionally based on whether someone is logged in or not. So under our unordered list, let's go ahead and add in a little bit of JavaScript by creating the, by typing in the open and close brackets. And within the open and close brackets, we wanna add in the value session. And what we wanna say is that if there's a user, we wanna display these particular links that's gonna go within these parentheses. And we'll add in the React fragment within the parentheses or outside of the parentheses, meaning that if there is no user logged in, then we want to display these particular links that's gonna go within these brackets. So now uh, within the first set of brackets to indicate that we are logged in, let's go ahead and use the link tag. And within the link, we want to add in the create post. And all Next.js links have to have an href similar to the A tags in standard HTML. And this particular route is gonna to go to the create dash post page. I know we haven't created it just yet, but we're gonna go ahead and set up the nav bar to link there. Next, we wanna add our class name for a little bit of styling. First, we wanna give it a little bit of padding on the X axis. Then we wanna give some padding on the Y axis. Next, we wanna add in the rounded button feature. We're gonna set the background color to primary. We wanna give a little margin top. The text color of this link is gonna be white. If we hover over it, we want the background color to change to indigo. And we want the text to change if we hover over it to indigo as well. And we're gonna set a little bit of transition so that it moves smoothly as we hover over it. And we'll set the duration of 300. So we're not gonna be able to see this just yet because we have the session imported and we're not logged in. Uh, but as I mentioned, we'll go ahead and do the create post as if we were logged in. So the next thing that we wanna add or the next link that we wanna add if we're logged in is the logout. So underneath the link, we'll add a button because this isn't gonna take us to a page, it's gonna log us out and keep us on that same page. And we're gonna add in a JavaScript method of onClick. And within the onClick method, we wanna add in the sign out function from next off. And now that we've added in the sign out function, this is going to care for the logout. We're gonna go ahead and style it by adding in a class name. And very similar to what we had previously for the create post, the only difference between the two is that the background color for the two are gonna be different. One will be primary and the other will be indigo. And as a result, the text color is gonna be a little different based on the hover state. Otherwise, that's the same styling we're gonna use for both of those active links. Next, let's go ahead and add in the buttons that we want presented if we're not logged in. So now we'll be able to see what these buttons look like once we save it and we navigate back to our localhost 3000. So we'll start out by bringing in a link because this is going to link us to the login page. And we're gonna add in an href and we'll set the destination to login. And we'll add in a class name as well. And the styling for this is gonna be the exact same as the create post. So if you want, you can basically just copy and paste it um, or you can type it in as I'm doing right now, or you can use your own styling based on what's inside of the Tailwind CSS docs. After we've added the login link, we wanna add in the sign in or register link, excuse me. And we'll need a href for it as well, and it's gonna to link to the register page. And we're gonna add in some styling that will be opposite of the login view. That way there's a little bit of contrast. 
And if we go ahead and save our page and relaunch our server, if we navigate back to our localhost 3000, we're gonna see that we have our login and register links presented. This is indicating that there's no active user logged in to our app. So now that we have our authentication set up, let's go ahead and set up the mobile portion of our nav bar. So first, let's care for the state management of our nav menu, indicating whether the nav menu is open or closed. So we'll go ahead and create the nav is variable use state, and we're gonna set the state to false, meaning that the nav bar is not visible. Next, let's create the visibility handler. Inside of the visibility handler, we wanna set the state of this, just a simple change of it, meaning that, hey, if the current state is false and the handler is pressed, it's gonna change it from false to true, meaning that this current state is false now, so false will change to true. The next thing that we wanna do is bring in the icons for opening and closing our nav menu. So underneath our blog site logo, let's start out by bringing in a div. And within that div, we're gonna give it a class name. The class name is going to be hidden because we do not want this visible while this screen is large. And we wanna set the Z index when it's not large to 50, meaning that the menu icons, we want that to stand out above the nav bar itself. This will make a little more sense once we take a look at it and we're finished, but just make sure that you have this typed in, otherwise you won't be able to see your icons. After that, we wanna add in a little bit of JavaScript and we wanna bring in the nav is visible use state variable. And we're gonna use the conditional statement saying that if it is visible, then we wanna use the outline is closed, meaning that the nav bar is open. And inside of that, we wanna style that as well by giving it a class name. And we want to give it a little bit of height and width. And then we wanna use the JavaScript on click method and we wanna give it the function, the nav visibility handler. And all this is, is that it's going to control the visibility of it. So it's gonna be able to change the state from true to false. And outside of our parentheses, let's add in the semicolon for or, and we'll add in another condition inside of these parentheses. This is going to be the actual menu and we wanna give it a class name of width and height. For this menu, we have to use the onClick method as well. And we just wanna pass in the function nav visibility handler to toggle the state of it. If we navigate back to our localhost 3000, we're gonna see that we have the nav menu visible. And if we click on it, we also have the close icon visible as well. But what we don't see is the links. So now we'll need to go back to our nav menu and add in a temporal literal. And we'll need to set a condition within the class name, meaning that if it is a small screen, this is what we wanna show. And if it's a large screen, we'll need to show something different. So in order to add in the conditional statement within our nav, we'll need to add in the temporal literal here. So let's just make a quick change by adding in the bracket and we can remove the close bracket and we can remove the close temporal. And if we go to the end of our nav, we can add in this temporal literal as well. And we can add in the closing bracket right there. So now we want to add in our condition and the way we'll do so is by using the dollar sign in brackets and inside of it we're going to say if the nav is visible we want it to be positioned to the right and if it is not or or then we want to have the position to right full. So let's go ahead and save our text editor and navigate back to localhost 3000. We can click on our menu icon and we see that the nav is now visible and we have the links to our home about and contact page and also log in and register and it is working as designed that concludes today's video in the next video we're going to work on building out our footer our login and our register screen so i appreciate you watching today's video if you enjoyed it please give it a like consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next one